Namaste, I'm Dr. Shantala Hegde, additional professor in the area of clinical neuropsychology. Today, I'll be happy to take you through a, a brief overview of the work we carry out in the area of neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, clinical neuropsychology of music and cognition. <laughs> Any injury to the brain, be it functional, like you would call it as neuropsychiatric conditions or neurological neurosurgical conditions, have an impact on the brain. And anything that you kind of work on to improve these cognitive functions, work on this principle of rewiring the brain. And what we know today is music can be one of the rich tool, not only to understand the functioning of the brain, but also help in rewiring, like in rehabilitation. Our aim is not to make our patients musicians. Our aim is to make them go back to their near normal functioning or normal functioning, improve their cognitive functions, which plays a central role in their recovery. It's not like as simple as saying, I'll play some music and then there'll be an improvement. Uh, let's say, how do we perceive pitch? How do we perceive rhythm? How do we perceive meter? When final product is, you engage the entire brain to appreciate music or to, to engage with music actively or passively. Now, if you're activating these different brain areas, which means you're kind of strengthening this wire, these connections between different brain areas and strengthening those. Use different components of music. So I teach them how to match up with rhythm, for example, how to keep up with a beat. Then how do you uh, uh, recognize with different pitch? Can you identify a lower pitch to a higher pitch? Can you identify, differentiate between two short melodies, if it's the same or different? Or you teach them later, next, complex rhythm patterns. You give them to skip one beat, keep up with a complex rhythm. So you are, the principles of neuropsychological rehabilitation is kept in mind. You build from basic blocks and take it to a higher level. The patients themselves find it very engaging. Instead of giving them paper pencil task or a computer based, you know, cognitive retraining task, when we give them rhythm task, we ask them to tap to rhythm. I can bring out the um, rasa of shringara to uh, happiness, to joy, or to you know uh, melancholy, to longing. Any any shades you can actually kind of work on the notes and how you bring the rhythm with part. <laughs> was my initial work was to look at um, different phases of raga elaboration let's say alap to jorjala to drut and have people who are not trained in music give me responses of what are the emotional experiences that they have so what we found uh, was that the within raga difference sometimes can be much wider which means i take ragyaman i give the alap portion versus the drut portion Within that same raga, my emotional experience can be quite varied compared to alap of Yaman versus Bihag versus, let's say, Bageshri, or Todi versus Marwa versus uh, some other, you know, raga which is more melancholic. I can confidently tell now that I use alap, I use some relaxing, depending on the tempo, um, I can make my patients more relaxed and thereby their engagement in the in the other neurocognitive tasks or neurocognitive rehabilitation sometimes improves or their mood changes, their anxiety comes down. Now there is a lot of connection between the musical phrases with emotion, right? So people have started asking question, why should this evoke this emotion? That's a, it's a, it's a very in-depth research question to ask and they have tried to re answer it from an evolutionary point of view. So let's say minor third, sa re sa versus sa re sa or sa 
no brighter note versus a minor note often um, minor third is associated with sadness or the minor chord in ragas also if you look at indian classical ragas and they did the pitch analysis so when i say oh yeah let's go for a movie or saying that oh no i'm very sad today i don't want to go so they did this pitch analysis through language and they found that it was always the minor third expressing the sadness and the major third expressing the happiness so there's a lot of overlapping between language and music even in the brain level there are shared neural substrates between language and music and that's the reason why we are looking at how can we use music or components of music or training through music to improve language functions that's the whole goal